Welcome to the White House. Thank you. <laughs> Happy Pride Month. Are we topless at the White House? Far be it from me to tell you who to vote for. I'm not going to do that. But I will tell you who not to vote for. I just want some of these images to kind of sink in and you think about what you're looking at, where you're looking at these things happening, and then ask yourself this question, is there anything that we can do about it? I want to send a message to the entire community, especially to transgender children. You are loved. You are heard. You are understood. And you belong. Can we take a little video? Hi, Mr. President. It is an honor. France rights are human rights. Oh, it's a video. Oh, it's a video. Are we topless at the White House? We literally have two dudes topless at the White House. One of them is a trans person, a man who wanted to be a woman. And so we want to promote this. We've got a president taking selfies and so forth. And this just sends an image, not just to our competitors around the world, because how would China, how would Russia, how would Canada or Mexico look at us? I guess we really don't care. But then how do we as U.S. citizens look at this? How do we see this? But then also how do Christians see this? The Bible says, the Bible is clear on this, and we use this passage a lot, and it's certainly applicable today. He says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who substitute darkness for light and light for darkness, who substitute bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. This is where we are. We had these discussions back in the 60s, back in the 70s, and even before then about once you start making these this sort of activity mainstream, what's going to happen? People would say, we just want to be left alone, left by ourselves. We're not trying to be. Well, we knew it was going to happen because once you get a a what we call biblically a deviant or sinful lifestyle room to operate and make it legitimate, well, then they're going to want more than that because you don't see people who are heterosexual trying to promote this to the degree that you see that. This this sexual perversion that we see, but again, this is what we have. This is what we're dealing with now. Again, as I said, I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I'm going to strongly suggest that you do not vote for this man again. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat. If you're Democrat and you don't want to vote for the Republican candidate, fine. Pick a different Democratic candidate. Pick someone who is not going to sully the image of our leader. You had a problem with the previous. Uh, president, you thought that he didn't carry himself with class and dignity and so forth. And maybe there's some truth to that. But you cannot turn around and say that this also is also classy. This is shameful. This is an abomination. And what are we doing? We're doing exactly what the Bible says. Again, we've covered this before. Paul says this. He says that although speaking about homosexuality and other sins, but we're camping on homosexuality and this group that we're talking about, this alphabet group, although they did not know the ordinances of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. If you don't think they're giving hearty approval to those that practice, we're promoting this at the White House. Yeah, we, we, we have a problem here. And so my suggestion is you might want to, America, we might want to do ourselves a favor and find a new leader. Amen.